For our last presentation this evening before we go to the judging, and then, of course, before we go to the overall uh, awards at the end, Lindsay Lazo of Amp Protection. Hi, my name is Lindsay, co-founder of Amp Protection, and we're looking to license our antimicrobial coating for urinary catheters to catheter manufacturers. Look to your left, now look to your right. One out of the three of you will have a medical implant at some point in your lifetime. This could be from something large and permanent, like a knee or hip, all the way to something more temporary, like a catheter. In particular, urinary catheters are life-saving devices for hundreds and thousands of people each year. However, when they all too often become infected, they go from being $2 devices to $4,500 unreimbursed nightmares, leaving patients in excruciating pain and surgeons left to clean out crusty biofilms from the area, scraping out dead and infected tissue, only to replace the catheter once again. Even worse, Recent policy has defined these infections as never events, or events that never should have occurred in the first place, which are now unreimbursable by Medicare and Medicaid, leaving heavy economic cost burdens on patients and hospitals alike. And even worse, all of these infections are treated with common antibiotics, which carry with them the threat of antimicrobial resistance in bacteria, considered to be a catastrophic threat to human health by the CDC, and projected to cost over $100 trillion and kill more people than cancer by 2050 if we don't act now. At Amp Protection, we ask the question, why wait until tomorrow to fight today's infections? Thus, we have created a coating for urinary catheters based off of surface-tethered antimicrobial peptides to prevent 80% of these infections from occurring without promoting resistance, all to be licensed to catheter manufacturers. Antimicrobial peptides are the antibiotics of tomorrow. These are proteins found in a variety of species that have broad activity against many different types of bacteria, including the resistant ones. This is because of their unique mechanisms. Additionally, tethering or chemically attaching these peptides to the surface via a unique linker molecule allows us to deliver these peptides in the right place, in the right time, and in the right dose, thus reducing infections and never events. Currently, the $1 billion urinary catheter market is primarily owned by Teleflex, Bard, and Boston Scientific. Half of this market are non-coded traditional catheters, and the other half are coded with anti antimicrobials such as silver, antibiotics, and chemicals. Unfortunately, these agents are loosely attached to the catheter surface, which leads to their toxic circulation throughout the body, which can not only promote resistance, but also hinder healing. However, our surface-tethered antimicrobial peptides are tightly coupled to the catheter surface, which allows us to deliver these peptides in a non-toxic way over a long period of time, all at a cost-competitive price. Additionally, recent policy has caused hospital purchasing organizations to shift their thinking when purchasing devices such as this one. But what about our customer, catheter manufacturers? Not only will our catheter coating provide them with a competitive advantage, but it can also be directly integrated into current dip coating processes at their manufacturing facilities, which are already put in place to coat other antimicrobial agents. We're currently in early stages leading up to animal studies funded by non-dilutive funding. Upon successful animal studies, we, we want to establish strategic partnerships with our potential customers, which will lead through pilot studies and FDA clearance. We expect $2 million to reach FDA and then another seven to nine million to get through FDA as a class two 510K device. Our strategic um, our strategic policy is to license our technology to these potential customers, and we're already establishing um, strategic partnerships with these companies, um, fostering relationships with them. Todd and myself are both PhD students at WPI with experience in, function, in evaluating functional medical devices. Terry has over 10 years' experience in antimicrobial te um, peptide technology, and um, Frank has over three decades of experience launching and growing successful entrepreneurial ventures. So currently, our 
our, our coding will help prevent never events and reduce these infections. So we ask the question again, why wait until tomorrow when we arrive at the post-antibiotic era without any alternatives? With AM Protection's coding, we can start reducing these infections, reducing hospital and patient cost burdens, but most importantly, saving lives today. Thank you. So does anyone on your team have a regulatory background or knowledge of getting drugs and devices through the FDA process? So nobody on our team right now does. Um, we do, we have talked to several regulatory agents both at FDA as well as people who are in charge of, of FDA clearance at some large medical device companies. And there is some, um, there's some discrepancies as to what exactly our coding would be. Um, the majority have said 510K class two device and we are looking at potential consulting firms to help us out with FDA clearance. So, um, first of all, congratulations on the most cringe-inducing presentation. Uh, <laughs> Thank tonight. you. I'm often I, the crusty biofilm I, girl. I, so. I particularly <laughs> like the crusty. Um, and I'm looking at the two or three people next to me who will have this experience, not me. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Not um, you, though. That's for sure. But I... I Thank you for this presentation because I think for everybody here, this presents one of the classic dichotomies in entrepreneurship, um, which I'll ask in, in this way. Why on earth do you want to sell to these people? Why not just kill them? I mean, make your own catheter and tell Boston Scientific, pardon me, go pound the expletive sand and take your couple billion dollars because we're going to take it from you. So that's a good question. Um, I think a lot of people- I'm concerned they're gonna say, okay, we'll pay you what, five cents? No, four cents. Right. Uh, how about three cents? Right. Yeah, that seems like a lot. Two cents? <laughs> well, so I think our team really just wants to get this technology out there, first of all. Um, a lot of these potential customers, so Bard, owns the majority of this market, and it's yeah. so difficult to compete with these people, um, especially when they already have established regulatory um, and things like that. And also, I think our team really just wants to get antimicrobial peptides out there. I know every single one of us has either had an infection or knows someone with an infection, maybe someone who's passed away from one. Um, I know I do. And so I just really want to see this crisis of antimicrobial resistance halted. Um, so, so just a thought for you is yeah. that sometimes your fastest way to be an adopted is to attack, not ask. Thank you, that's good advice. <laughs> uh, what are the risks, and then sort of in a corollary way, what are the things you prove through the animal trials? When you come out of the animal trial, what will you, have, what, what will you be able to uh, say to people, and what risk will you be, uh, will you have eliminated? So in order to, get through animal studies, we need to be able to prove that our coating is just as good or better than silver antibiotics and chemical treatments. Um, we're currently investigating all of the different um, avenues or different studies that we need for animal studies. Um, and we're really hoping that the strategic partnerships will help us out with that. Um, the biggest risk really is that, and I think a lot of people can, can um, feel for this, but animal studies are so expensive and it's really, those are sitting right in between the valley of death for us, like, you know, the part where we either fail or, or go forward. Um, and with catheters and medical devices, we require large animals. So that's really gonna be the biggest risk, but it's also going to have the highest value inflection. So at that milestone, um, we're either gonna be very appealing to our potential customers or not, and that's gonna be the make or break point. There are a lot of coatings out there already, as you acknowledged. Is, is your coating optimized for urinary tract, or is it better across a lot of different applications? Um, yeah, so we do identify our, um, our product as a platform. In fact, we originally were targeting orthopedic applications, like knees and hips, um, but the incidence of infection was so much lower, it was a difficult uh, barrier to entry. Um, so we... Our coding is optimized for the particular surfaces that we've chosen, but we've, we've had it adapted to a bunch of different surfaces. Um, urinary catheters is just the first market that is the fastest growing and it has the highest pain point at this point. Um, does that answer your question? 
Yeah, I get this, well, if it's a platform, what's so good about your platform compared yeah, to Yeah, so it's other? better than current. So current technologies really, um, they leach out into the body and cause toxic effects. So anything that can be kept locally at the area, um, at the medical device, can is really a competitive advantage for us because we don't have any toxic effects.